What's up, Nova Heads? It's Amber Nova. This is Chris Lights Out Lytle. Hi, this is Ray Boom Boom Mancini. Ice Boogie. It's the real and raw August Art Swap. This is Smiling Sam Alvia. It's Archimedes. I'm Jack Cartwheel, the real deal, the human highlight reel. This is Steve Maury. I'm Victor Henry. Boy, Bulletproof Troop. Billy Clark. It's ECW Original, The Enforcer. C.W. Anderson. This is Honest John. Hyper Street. Luis Moreno. And this is Mr. Classic. It's Anthony Noe. I'm Jason Poulet. The Young Ghost. Right <laughs> it's all how to price here. When I say what's my name, tonight, Richie Slade. My name is Gina Rivera, the Frank Sinatra of the Spanish Mafia. The incredible one, Anthony Idol. This is Ken Shamrock, the Golden Boy, Jordan Clearwater. Yo, watch <laughs> and listen. <laughs> Championship Online podcast. Um, this is Alex Morris here. Hi, Richard Modest. So, please listen to it. Otherwise, be cursed. Okay, see you later. Love that dinner. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, you're now watching and listening to Championship on the Line podcast. My name is Alex, and I'm doing usual with my co-host, Rich. And today is a very, very special episode because we have a professional wrestler in the house, but also pro wrestler and amateur wrestler also, which is pretty cool. And uh, is also Santino Bros graduate. He is the king of takedowns, ladies and gentlemen. He is Alonzo Alvarez. Thank you so much, man. How's it going, guys? Not- What's up? Um, again, we're, we're happy to have you on, man. Really excited. Uh, before we get started, though, we like to do a segment where we do uh, top 10 questions. We ask questions about yourself. Is that cool with you, you? Yeah, let's go ahead. I'm down. All right, cool. Take it away, Rich. <clears throat> awesome. We'll start right away. Uh, first question, what is your favorite movie of all time? E- that's tough. <laughs> I don't know if I have one specific one because I've watched so many. I'd probably just say this recent Spider-Man movie that came out. Just okay. the last movie I saw. <laughs> In <laughs> your opinion, <laughs> which one is the best Spider-Man? Mm. Uh, there's so many. I, I can't I can't really decide to be honest. I'm just <laughs> no a fan. Just a fan. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> Nice. We'll go. Uh, next question. Favorite TV show of all time? Favorite TV show? Um, The Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Nice. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have like a, a favorite? Fir- yeah, that's the first. Yeah. Do you have like a favorite character or is it just Will? Uh, Carlton. Yeah. Yeah, he was always silly and I just reminded me of myself because I'm, I can't, I'm silly too. So. <laughs> nice. Nice. What is your favorite band or music artist you like to listen to? Eminem. Do you have a favorite song? Uh, Survival. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, Eminem is my guy. Have you uh, have you seen him in concert yet, or? No, no, to- I just I have a best friend that's a big fan of his, and he kind of got me into it, so I just you know just listen. been a fan ever since. Nice. nice. Uh, next question up your favorite video game my favorite video game i like to play nba 2k that's the game i play the most nice what's, uh, what's your go-to team on that one the lakers of course yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, have to, yeah, I have to represent oh yeah for sure well that leads pretty much the next question what is your favorite sports team favorite sports team is is the lakers yeah yeah nice <laughs> Uh, next question: What is your favorite season? Like your summer, winter guy, fall, spring? I'm actually a winter guy. Nice. Yeah, oh, it, reminds me, yeah. it reminds me of wrestling like, season. It always started around that time. So. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was exactly. Yeah, I was about to say that like winter times wrestling, so it works perfectly. Yeah. Um, next question: uh, Favorite meal you like to eat? Favorite meal? Hmm. I like to eat a. Uh, so I'm actually uh, Peruvian. My mo- my parents are Peruvian, and uh, my mom likes to make a lot of Peruvian dishes. And so I like when she makes a uh, lomo saltado. Oh, yeah, nice. One of my favorites. 
Nice. Uh, what is uh, outside of wrestling? Do you have a hobby you like to do? Sad. Uh, I I mainly play video games. I like to work out, go to the gym, hang out with some friends, play some basketball here and there. I'm not that good, but I just like to <laughs> around, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. So, stuff like that. Nice. Uh, before you wrestle, do you have a uh, um, do you have a ritual you like to, uh, to do before you enter the ring? <clears throat> yeah, I like to I like to honestly clear my head and try to try to keep calm and relax because the more I think about the match and the show and everything, I psych myself out and I get extremely nervous and I'll be in there all jittery. So I like to just clear my head and just relax. And I got that from amateur wrestling too. It's all the time just. I see my opponent walking around the mat. And I'm just there, just kind of just standing, sitting, relaxing, just clearing my head, just because I know, like, okay, I know my game plan. I know what I want to do. I just got to go in there and relax and execute when I'm in there. Nice. Last question, but not least. If you could have a match with someone who isn't a wrestler, who would it be with? It could be a celebrity, an athlete, a fictional character. Um... I have a wrestling match with someone that's not a wrestler. Um, maybe Spider Man. <laughs> nice. Yeah. It'd be an interesting, how, interesting match. Oh no, for sure. How do you see that going? Like, how how do you see that match uh, happening? I I'm probably gonna get shot with a lot of webs. <laughs> gonna have to like look around my back everywhere. I don't know. It's gonna be hard, but we'll see. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. But again, thank you so much for taking the time to do this, man. Really excited to have you uh, no on. Um, but you know, you know, the first time we actually saw you wrestle was recently. It was in Champ Jerusalem Hollywood. Uh, mm -hmm. It was a match against uh, Jake Banny, I believe. And mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to talk about that. You know, like first, how did that come about? You doing Champ Jerusalem Hollywood, and what was that whole experience like for you? Um, I just, I honestly just showed up and uh, did some ring crew, and then they asked me, "Hey, can you do a match?" And I said, "Sure, why not?" And then. You know, I found out my opponent was Nick Banny, and he just he's a crazy guy, and he's yeah. a little bit crazy, not not in his head. So, tried to go in there with a different game plan, but didn't really work out. So, it was it wasn't my night that night? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, well, you know, Rich and I when we first saw you right off the bat, we saw the leather jacket, which had all the patches, which <laughs> I thought was cool, and then the takedowns right away. I'm like, oh awesome he's a wrestler the singlet and because rich and i we actually wrestled a little bit in high school so mm -hmm. like right we were like oh finally we see someone doing the double legs and doing a single the fireman carry which is awesome um but how did that come about you doing amateur wrestling like how, how did you discover like how, how how did you get into it um so i was like four years old when i started and i had i had like i, I still have it to this day i have adhd so in order to keep me active and keep me going my parents put me in wrestling at a young age and they uh yeah, it just, it just it's just helped ever since. And ever since, I mean, when I was four, I started. I wasn't good. I had lost all my matches that whole year when I was four. Eventually, I won. I got excited. And then um, I just, it's just been going up from there. So that's, that's, that's that. Mm -hmm. And also, like, you wrestled and so you wrestled all throughout middle school and high school, right? Yeah, yeah, middle school, high school, and I, I didn't really do much of college. I, I, I stopped after high school. I just focused mm -hmm. on pro wrestling. Mm -hmm. And what was been like the career, like, you know, going through that wrestling, like, were you also a fan of professional wrestling too, or did you get into yeah. that a little later? Yeah, I actually started watching with my brother. My brother's uh, four years older than me, so he, he, he had it on one time, and I was watching with him. And uh, ever since then, I think I was like four or six years old, and so I just got hooked. And, you know, the first person I ever saw who's my favorite wrestler is John Cena. And so I, I grew up watching him and just being a fan of him the whole, my whole life. And and then as I became a wrestler, I uh, I, I grew a bigger fan of uh, Kurt Angle. So it reminds me a lot of myself. <laughs> mm -hmm. As a fan, like, like for us, like, I don't know if you can see, but we have like a bunch of figures in the back. Did you ever collect the figures or play the video games? Yeah, I actually have a, a box in, in my closet full of action figures and stuff. And oh, nice. I haven't collected in, in, in years, but I, I kind of want to get back into it. But uh, it would be cool to go back. And, and I also played a lot of video games growing up. My favorite, favorite uh, wrestling game was probably 
SmackDown versus Raw 2006. Mm, yeah. Six, seven, yeah. Those are the good days. Oh, yeah. Do you have, like, a favorite figure that you have, like, clicking? Like, an all-time favorite? <clears throat> well, I have a lot of Undertakers and a lot of John Cena's. So those are probably my two favorite ones I have. Oh, nice. And then, you know, going to, you know, doing amateur wrestling then, you know, after high school, and then what made you decide that you wanted to be a professional wrestler? When did that decision come about you doing? And then how did you discover Santino Bros also? Um, I've just always been a fan, and, and, I, and I, I just knew, like, I can do this. I know I can do this, and I want to do it. So then um, I was 16, and I was in the summer before my senior year of high school. Um, I looked up pro wrestling schools near me on Google. And I found Santino's and uh, um, the requirement was you were supposed to be 18 when you started, but I didn't want to wait. So I had my dad call the, call Joey and the owners and be like, Hey, you know, can you start? And my dad kind of talked them into like, letting me start early. And so a week later and around July, I think June or July, I started training and that class was already two weeks in. So I joined late, but I went in there and caught up pretty quick. Like they had me in the in the mat with Eli and Eli was catching me up in all the moves that I was missing out and all that stuff. And um, yeah, so I was 16 when I started uh, training over there at Tantino's. Mm-hmm. And we notice sometimes like a lot of, you know, obviously a lot of high school wrestlers and even college wrestlers, you know, after that, they make that move. Most of the time they make that move to MMA. Was there ever a decision where you maybe wanted to jump into that business or was this always strictly just professional wrestling? Yeah, I, I, I thought about joining MMA, and I'm still a fan to this day, and I, I love MMA, but I just didn't want to have my nose to my ear and have my face all messed up and be all be looking even uglier than I am right now when I'm older. <laughs> but take me back, you know, doing, doing Santino's, like, what was, like, the, like the free first few days there, like, what was a typical day of Santino's? What was the training like doing it? It was, it was tough. To, my first day, they made us do like 300 push-ups, 500 squats. They made us do like five laps around the thing. Um, then they made us run the ropes for like five minutes. It was, it was brutal. And I was, it was, I was, I was like thrown back by it because I was, I wasn't expecting something like that, but I mean, in order to do this, you have to be well-trained and well-conditioned. Mm-hmm. Do you remember like, at the time, like, who was in your class or wrestling today? Like, was there anyone in the class? So, in my class, my class was one of the biggest in Santino's ever. It was 38 kids. Oh, we wow. had 38 people in my class. And the only three left, well, two technically, that actually started in the class. We have one that is kind of like an adoptive cousin, which uh, me and Lucas Riley are actually the – we were both the youngest guys in the class at 16. And we were the last two in the class. No. We debuted together also. But then we also have uh, Jesse James, who came in in the middle of our training. And he kind of graduated with us. So we kind of call him our adoptive cousin. Oh, nice. Yeah. And then, you know, with Santino's, you know, a lot of, you know, especially wrestlers that, you know, on to big leagues that came from Santino's. Was there a time where they brought guys like to come and train you guys? Or even, did you ever do seminars too? Yeah, um, Joey always was really good at bringing people. We had uh, Marty Janetti come in. Oh, nice. We had uh, Rocky Romero, B Boy. You know, Bateman did a few seminars, and so we, we had a lot of uh, older guys there that to pick to pick their brains and stuff. Mm-hmm. And what was it like working with those guys and training with them? It was cool. It was, it was fun. I, I didn't really like expect what it would be like but then just talking to them picking their brain they're actually like good people and stuff and they're willing to help so that's that's always cool and learning with like you know the names you just mentioned like the veterans was there any advice that kind of stuck to you or like anything they told you particular the one thing that i always that always sticks with me to this day it's something that joey actually says said to the class one time was it's not about the destination it's about the journey and so that always sticks to me now. And every time I, I see any struggles or, or like if I can't lift heavy in the gym, I'm like, okay, I need a, I need a, you know, it's not about the destination; it's about the journey. Mm-hmm. And then while while training, like, was, like, did you ever watch any footage on a, like a specific wrestler to kind of get inspiration for your ring style? 
Yeah, I watched a, a little bit of, of Kurt Angle, Eddie, just to kind of get a little bit of Matt Wrestling down, because I knew I wanted to do that as I was training. I wanted to be like the the Matt Wrestler guy. And so I just watched a lot of, you know, Chris Benoit, Kurt, uh, Kurt Angle, Christian, all these guys that were really good in, on their on their on the ground. Mm-hmm. And watching you, you know, obviously, like like I said earlier, watching you come with the jacket and like the single and everything, was that always the plan that you were gonna bring that into kind of like your character today? Yeah, it it kind of like, I didn't really have uh, bring bring the jacket in right away. Kind of just transition. I wore like different jackets and stuff. And then eventually I was like, you know, I have all these patches sitting around my house. Like, why don't I just make a jacket and get a jacket made and have all the patches on my jacket? So then the idea came about, I got the, I got the jacket off Amazon and then um, I just put all the patches on and got, had a guy do it for me. Nice. And also like with the takedowns too, was that something that was important to you? Like, hey, hey, I'm going to put wrestling moves into my style like the single legs the double legs is that something that's always in plan starting that you're going to bring that into the table yeah all the time man. i mean i i've done it since i was four so i know so many ways to take people down from so many different positions that i could do with my eyes closed in my sleep at any given moment honestly and so i always like to incorporate it but i also like to incorporate the pro wrestling at the same time i like to do an even balance but but if it comes down to it if, if i know nothing's working I stick to what I know, and that's 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 been working so far. Mm-hmm. And that's something too I want to ask you about. Coming from an amateur wrestling background to you know now doing professional wrestling, was it an easy transition? Where like move set wise, when you like creatively, when you're thinking of all these like moves, was it easy? Like okay, maybe I could do like a double leg into this into that. Like when you yeah. map out a match. Yeah, and training it was a lot of the moves were like similar to what I was doing in in uh amateur wrestling like all the roles were kind of kind of similar there's a lot of moves that like were very similar to get into they're just different ways but they're very similar and the only real things i have trouble with were like the lucha stuff and the basing and mm-hmm. the striking and the selling and all this you know just all this big stuff that wrestling does but anything that involved the mat stuff i, I kind of got it down pretty quick and i was i was always able to get it really fast so like they would always use me as a dummy and, and training to, to do all the moves, you know, I, was, I didn't really know what they were doing. They're like, oh, just take this bump. Okay. And I was just kind of new because I, I knew the, the movements from, from wrestling. Nice. And then when it came down to like, you know, with promos and doing stuff on the mic, did you guys do a lot in that in Centinos? Not in the class we had, but, uh, um, Joey had a, a, a class where Jervis Conbelly came in and he did a character mm. class and that class actually really uh, helped me break out because I was I was shy and quiet when I was in training I wasn't really talking much I wasn't always keeping to myself I wasn't as obnoxious and loud as I as I am now um, so that class he he kind of brought he kind of brought out the character in all of us so it was, it was it was really cool and really fun class I really enjoyed it I appreciate Jervis for everything he's done for everyone in that class. Mm-hmm. And also, you know, mentioning earlier, you know, you made your debut match against, you know, Lucas Riley. How did that come about when you got the news that you were going to have your match? And also, what was it like that feeling to come out for the curve for the first time in your debut? So I, I got it. Um, I had graduated June 2016, and then I went, um, I went to, to training that next day. And then they, they had uh, told us, like, oh, you're going to debut in December against Lucas because we're the only two left in our class. And we just kept training and training and training. And um, so that day I, I woke up, I woke up really nervous, excited. You know, I knew my family was going to be there. So I knew I, I, I had to, like, do good and show out. And uh, I knew his family was going to be there. So I didn't want to disappoint them either. Mm-hmm. And so um, it, it, felt, it felt good if um, – I felt the same nervousness that I felt in like state championships or CIF tournaments. So I was kind of used to it, but, mm-hmm. but the nerves kind of escalated a bit more because I knew, okay, this is like my first time in a ring in front of a crowd and, oh man. But um, we got through the match. It was a fun match. It wasn't, mm-hmm. wasn't the best match we've had, but it was, it was, it was really fun. Mm-hmm. 
And also, like, talking about, you know, with family and friends, like, what was their thoughts when you told them you were going to make the decision to to do pro wrestling? My dad was all with it, but my mom was was really scared at first. She was, she was like, no, no, you're going to get hurt, this and that. But then it was actually my debut match when she uh, calmed down a little bit more because she knew, oh, all this training you did is actually protecting you and helping you and, and uh, getting you better. You know, because at first she was always scared, thinking I'm going to come home with – a broken face, it, it scabbing my head face and all this stuff. But now I just really was just practicing to get better <laughs> at the craft. Mm-hmm. And, when you, and, and you so far, this has been, you know, five years for you, right? In the pro, in pro wrestling? Yeah. This past December was five years. Oh, nice. Congrats, man. Thank and, you. And, uh, you know, going back to those five years, what matches have been like your funnest matches? Like ones that you're proud of when you look back? Um, I've had I had a lot of my favorite matches in Up All Night actually. Um, so I wrestled uh Jake Atlas there. I wrestled Tyler Bateman. I got to have one on one with my tag with my former tag partner, um, Vinny Wasco there. So I had a, I had a lot of fun matches in uh, Up All Nights. Mm-hmm. And also, like you said, teaming up with you know Vinny Wasco. Well, how did that partnership and that come about? And what was it like also working with him? Like, yeah, so, so there was a time where I wasn't really doing much in Santino's, and so uh, they had asked me, like, oh, okay, Vinny's about to debut. We don't really have anything for him either, but why don't we put him in a – and so they had asked me, like, are you down to tag with him? And I said, sure, why not? Like, it would be it would be, be interesting, different change of scenario. I've never been in a tag before, so it would be cool to, like, learn tag psychology and learn all this stuff with tag division and – um yeah, they brought it to my attention. I said, yeah. And I knew Vinny because I was I went to training all the time and I helped him train and um, get better at what he was doing. And so I, I kind of already had a good relationship with him. So it was kind of just from there, it was, it was, it was cool. Oh, nice. And also the name too, which I, I loved, you know, Hustle Muscle, which I was like such a good name. Who came up with that tag name? We both actually came up with it together. We were just throwing a lot of ideas together, a lot of names, and then eventually, like, hustle and muscle just came about. Like, I'm the hustle, he's the muscle, and, you know, maybe I, sometimes I can be the muscle, sometimes he'll be the hustle. So it's, it's kind of like, it kind of fit us perfectly a little bit. Mm-hmm. And also, you know, going back in your career, you've had matches with a lot of guys that came from, you know, obviously from Santino's. <clears throat> but when you have a match with someone that, you guys been to the same wrestling school. Does it make it easier to work with somebody because you guys came from that same uh, school background? Yes, it makes it easier, but also sometimes a little bit harder because you know, like you don't want to you don't want to disappoint the guy, but also like their their move set can change at any time. So like my first time wrestling Lucas, his move set was different than when I wrestled him two years after that or three years after that. You know, so it's it, it kind of it's it's easier to an extent. Mm-hmm. And also, you know, working with guys like you worked with guys like Don Kubrick and Bad Dutito, and also guys even like Jay Atlas. What was it like working with those guys and being in the ring with them? It was fun, especially Dom and Jake. Those guys are like my best friends. So it was, it was always fun getting in the ring with them because we knew that when we were in there, we weren't friends and that we would hit each other harder and beat each other up even worse. And, um, and then working with Tito, he's, you know, he's a bad dude. He, he dropped me on my head the first move he gave me. So I knew, okay, I have to come back and bring it to this guy. I have to, you know, I have to show my toughness to this guy because I was still new at, around that time. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and especially with now, you know, is there any wrestlers, particular wrestlers you'd like to work with, like, in the future? Um, I feel like. I feel like, honestly, I can hang with anyone, like anyone that they give me. I feel like I can go in there and just hang. Like, I I feel like I haven't really been given a chance to show what I've gotten because I've been in a tag for two years. And um, then, then my, you know, Vinny left to go be a ref for WWE. And uh, I've kind of been like stuck, kind of going. I've been kind of in like a reset. Like, I need to show, show these promoters and these fans that like, hey, I can do this. Like, I have all my friends you know, and Santino is doing all this big stuff, but I'm always there in training, helping them doing all, all these cool moves that they know. And, you know, I'm just here sitting in the background, not not getting the opportunity. But I know eventually it's going to come. And when it does, I'm going to show everyone that I can 
I can hang with these with the top names that they that these companies have. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I know, Rich, and I would definitely agree with that because uh, you want watching your matches and watching it. It's just like you, 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 you come up with such a different like techniques that people are not used to seeing, and I yeah. think when we see it, it's just it's awesome, you know, and because I think with you, you're so well rounded. I feel like you do every single style you do, you know, and you do very, very well. So, you know, the future, man, I can't wait for the matches. I, you know, cause I can see you like even Rich and I were talking about, there's names that pop up. I'm like, Oh, for him and Lazo would be such a great match. You yeah. Know? But you know, as of now, you know, what are your goals as of now? Like what's the promotions that you would like to work with in the future? I mean, of course, GCW, LA fights, PCW ultra, um, PWG, all the all these big companies, you know, and and going back to the to the previous thing where there's also like I'm not just like I I know I'm I'm known specifically from that, but like the last Santino show I did my first dive, and um, but I know a lot of lucha stuff. I know a lot of dives. I know I can do I can I'm I'm gonna try to incorporate more. Um, I'm gonna open up my move sets now, so I'm gonna show people that hey I can fly too. I can do lucha and I can do technical technical stuff so you know mm. i want to show I, i'm i'm excited to show people what i, what I can do because i'm i'm pretty athletic and i know i can do stuff that a lot of people don't think i can do that i can mm. oh yeah man absolutely i'm excited to see that too you know and especially because of wrestling too it helps too because wrestling is such an athletic sport you know so with all the moves you do does that help from having that wrestling background to do the flips and and the moves yeah, but I honestly shocked myself all the time because I at first I didn't really think I could do all these moves. Like when I first did a moonsault, I didn't really think I could do a backflip because I was always scared to do backflips. But then I had my trainer push me to keep going back and keep doing it and keep doing it. And then I was doing Los Lutras class and I was doing these stuff on the ropes and, you know, uh, springboarding and all these, I doing some fake dives or doing regular dives. And I just surprised myself like, hey, I can actually do this. All right, now, now that I know I can do this, what can I do to this? What can I do here? What can I do there? What can I do this and that? You know, and I have a lot of things in the back of my head and a lot of things that I'm excited to show people. Mm. And in doing, you know, especially doing amateur wrestling for such a long, long time, do you ever get a time where you like have that itch and you miss competing in, in that style of wrestling? Yeah, I, I've got I've gotten the itch a bunch of times. And when I do, I usually go back to my high school practices and i just go in there and roll around with uh, my old coaches or just some of the high schoolers that are there and just roll around with them and have fun i usually go for like a week so i can get that itch off of me <laughs> and, uh, you know it, it's always fun it's always cool because every time i go my coach is like oh this is an alumni you know and then he has me teach them my favorite move which is a head and arm and so he has me teach the move all the time to them and uh, and then they they all try to wrestle me, and I'm like, oh man, now I gotta go wrestle all these guys. <laughs> <laughs> and what advice do you give to those those young kids that are doing uh, wrestling? I, I always tell them that wrestling is very very mental and and very mentally tough. So you know, um, and to also like like if you just stick with it, you're gonna you're gonna be happy because. Wrestling has taught me has given me so much mental discipline and and um, it's it's been it leads to like any jobs you do or anything you do in life it's just gonna help you uh, succeed in what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, absolutely. And you know, for Rich and I coming from wrestling backgrounds too, it's just you know it's a it's a crazy sport, you know. And uh, you know, was it also you know you know obviously doing pro wrestling, you know there's always time you get to kind of gain weight and kind of build more muscle. And then from amateur wrestling, it's always cutting weight and losing mm-hmm. much weight. What was that transition like for you from going from losing all this water weight and then going and gaining muscle? I actually enjoyed it because I was, uh, my senior year of, uh, of wrestling, I was so burnt out at the time of amateur wrestling since, because my senior year, I think I was already 14 years doing amateur wrestling, 13, 14 years. And I was, I was mentally burnt out, physically burnt out of it. And so I wrestled my last match and I kind of just laid there and I was like, I know this is the end, 
But then I knew that I had pro wrestling and I was excited because I know, okay, I can start focusing on my body, working out more. I don't have to co-wait anymore. I can eat whatever I want. And so I kind of just like, just let go of it for a while. I, I don't think I really went back to a wrestling gym, like my wrestling high school in maybe two years after I graduated mm. because I was so burnt out to the point where I was like, I don't even want to see a mat anymore. I don't even want to go back yeah. and do all these stuff, you know, because I was so physically and mentally tired of cutting all this weight and having to go in their wrestling tournaments barely even eating for two days so it was oh, just yeah, yeah i kind of just like you know screw this <laughs> <laughs> do you have like a, a like a cool like fun story from your amateur days like crazy fun story yeah i had this guy one time that he uh i have a, i have a few um there was one where i wrestled this guy and as I was wrestling with them, I'm tying up with them, and all I see is just like, there's just like piss thing coming down his singlet, and I'm just oh. like, oh no, this is <laughs> bad. And then there was another time where I wrestled this guy, and I got him in a double leg, and I took him down. And as I took him down, he just like he just laid a little big fart out, oh. and like their face was right there, right next to it. And I just all I did was laugh because I thought it was just funny. And then um, and then after the match, we shook hands, and he was like. I'm sorry, man. You kind of uh, you just squeezed one out at me, and you know, just laughed it out because I just thought it was hilarious. So it's, it wasn't anything bad. <laughs> oh man, that's that's crazy. Yeah, uh, because I know Richard has like their stories that similar too. You know, when you wrestling someone, how huh, much? Yeah, I mean, we were talking about that where I was at a tournament and uh, my teammate was facing someone, and mid match, the guy like stopped and ran to the outside of the gym. And I guess he went straight to the bathroom. He had to throw up. I guess he was disqualified because he runs out. I was wondering what happened. And then I realized 10 minutes later because I had to go rest. I'm like, oh, that's the guy. That makes sense. He ran and just vomited in the, in the <laughs> sink. I'm like, he didn't even make it to the toilet. It was in the sink. I'm like, that's disgusting. Damn. But, um, <laughs> yeah, that's happened. I, like the thing you said, the urine. I've, I've never seen that. But I've seen uh, where someone like crapped themselves. I've seen that before oh, where you've yeah. seen like the stain. I thought, I'm like, no, I've seen that a couple of times. I don't know if that's that, that common, yeah. but yeah, in the four years I saw that. So yeah. a lot of uh, crazy stuff. I mean, you expect it too. Like you like you were saying the weight cutting, you're kind of messing almost with like your, your system. So you're not trying to like, you know, intake so much food and then you're kind of messing with your digestive system. So it's bound to happen. Yeah. And there's some people like they, they, they don't eat for two days and then they weigh in, in the tournament, they make weight and then they go eat mcdonald's or jack in the box or something oh, yeah. <laughs> and that's kind of what causes it and then it's like oh crap now i need to poop in the middle of this match and stuff like yeah. that it's, it's kind of hilarious <laughs> and it's funny too because like you're saying it's the guy's like i don't know i had a buddy every do me he would cut all this weight and then he would make it on the scale and then after he would have like this giant meal it'd be like a chicken sandwich or a teriyaki bowl and I'm like, you understand you have all that food in your system and now you're going to wrestle like in slow motion. Because right. he has, you know, like, why why do that? Like, I, I never would understand that. I'd rather yeah. not eat just a little bit of food, keep some water in my system, and then yeah. go from there, which is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but talking about, you know, fun stories, amateurs, do you have any crazy fun stories from your pro wrestling career so far? Um. <laughs> I've had a lot of fun moments with with especially with uh with uh Lucas and Dom and uh Jake. I always I always have really fun moments with them. Like <laughs> we always go out at um uh, just outside of shows or outside of training, we always just go out play like do um escape rooms and all that mm -hmm. stuff. We always hang out with each other and birthdays, Christmas, give each other Christmas presents. So those are the moments I really cherish the most is just hanging out with them and getting close and they're kind of like family now so oh nice that's awesome man and in talking about you know especially with, with with now you know you obviously have so much wrestling now with impact and diddy and aw how much wrestling do you watch today not as much as i really want to but um probably like i watched smackdown here and there raw and i'm watching i'm starting to watch a lot more of the indies because i just i i you know, I, I wasn't watching it back then when I first was coming up because I didn't really know what anything was. But now I watch a lot of like New Japan, PWG, all these old old promotions that are out there. Mm -hmm. And also with today, you know, because watching from a kid and then watching now, what are your thoughts 
on wrestling, how it is today and everything. It's it's getting bigger and bigger every year and it's exploding. And, you know, I just feel like it's one of these days we're just going to take over the whole world. I mean, we pretty much are, but we're going to – it's going to be – yeah, we're just going to take over the whole world. Everyone's going to want to be arrested and do what we do. No, nope, yeah, absolutely, man. Totally agree. And, uh, you know, with someone that's, you know, someone's watching this and wants to become a professional wrestler, what advice would you give to someone that wants to be in this business? Just stick with it, man. Find the right school. that uh, Find a place that makes you happy and that you like going to to train at. And uh, just stick with it. You know, it just, it's going to be a lot of hard moments, a lot of ups and downs, but but like I said earlier, it's not just it's not the destination, it's a journey. And part of training is, is a journey of where you want to get to. So just stick with it, work hard, and just listen to your trainers and you, you'll be good. Awesome, man. That's awesome, man. Awesome advice. And and again, Alonzo, thank you so much for, for being on this pod, man. We really, really appreciate you taking the time to do this, man. We had so much fun. No worries, man. Thank you guys. Thank you for for being, being patient with me, you know, it's my first podcast. I don't know if I did good or bad. I don't, I don't know, but. That was good, man. <laughs> yeah, good. yeah, I appreciate it. Especially we kind of like, we like talking to special perform like amateur wrestlers too, because we uh-huh. kind of did it. So it was like, when we found, when we were looking and you had that back, I'm like, yes, like finally we got a wrestler. Because I believe this is probably the second time, right, Rich? The second amateur mm-hmm. wrestler we had so far. So okay. yeah, man, we love it. Um, is there anything you uh, like to uh, plug in? Anything you have coming up or social oh, media you'd like to plug in? Instagram, Alonzo Alvarez 98. Twitter, Alonzo Alvarez 98. And uh, I don't really use Facebook much. So, I mean, you can go, you can find me there, but I don't, I don't really use it much. I'm more of an Instagram and Twitter guy. And uh, there's a Santino show coming up February 19th. And then I'm, I'm also going to be wrestling at Best of the West in February 12th. So uh, just take a look. Nice. And there you go. I'll put everything in the description down below where you can follow and also follow Alonzo Alvarez, follow all his social medias and follow everything because he is a really great wrestler. So please tune in and check that out. And uh, again, thank you so much, man. Really happy to have you here and so much fun, man. Subscribe to to the YouTube channel for you guys. Subscribe, (laughs) hit the like button, subscribe, share, comment, all that, all that fun stuff. (laughs) yes thank you so much and there you go that's going to be it for us here in championship online podcast we'll see you guys next time peace